Right, so in today's video, I'm going to add a very inexpensive upgrade to my workshop that should dramatically improve the way I work or the way I do things in my small shop. Now, just quickly before I get dug in today or with today's shop upgrade, I want to mention, like I said in my previous video, my next big build will be the revised version of my all-in-one workshop bench. And that is still the case. So keep your eyes open. I will start posting those videos really soon. In the meantime, I want to add this very inexpensive shop upgrade that, as I mentioned, will hopefully dramatically improve the way I do things in my small shop. Now, I think more and more people are starting to migrate towards going cordless with more and more workshop machines becoming available in a battery powered alternative, even things like mitre saws or small contractor type table saws. But I think we're still far away from completely eliminating the need for power cords or extension cords in our workshops. So until then, extension cords are often found here, on our workshop floors, creating a tripping hazard and just being a general nuisance. There are many options available on the market to assist in mitigating the hassle that comes with using extension cords or to better improve or to improve the power management system within a small workshop. Things like retractable extension cords. But these can get pricey really quickly and it won't really fit in with my vision of a dynamic workshop that can move around to adapt to whatever I'm going to be building. As an alternative, I guess I can invest in a new power layout for my workshop where I run power all along the outside and place a power point every meter. But this would be ridiculously expensive and time consuming, not to mention overkill. And why would I if I can go with a tried and tested system of running power overhead along the full length of my workshop where I can access it at any point. It would also have the advantage of being able to transport something like dust collection or even compressed air and it can do it at the fraction of the cost. The overhead system will also fit in with my vision for a dynamic workshop where everything on the floor can move around, having the air and power overhead being able to move with it, truly maximizing the functionality of my vision of a dynamic workshop. Now the first question is how do I plan on creating a mobile power point overhead or mobile air point overhead? Now I'm going to start by using a system that you have probably seen before, which is taking a steel wire rope and adding it under tension down the length of my workshop, creating a mobile rail system for the power to move along. Now ideally I would like to add it down the center and have my power and air on the same line, but because I have my lumber rack down the center of my workshop, I'm going to split it up putting the power on the one side and the air on the other side. So the first step of the project is going to be adding the steel wire rope under tension, then adding the system that will allow me to move the power point along the length of the workshop. At this point, nothing new, you will find many examples of systems like this on the internet, but I'm going to end off by putting my own spin on it, by adding a unique mechanism that will allow me to also transport the power along the width of the workshop and give me access to it at eye level, but still be able to store it out the way in the roof or even after the power tool has been plugged into the socket. To install the wire rope, I am installing eye bolts at each end of my workshop to create fixing points and I want this wire rope to sit as high as possible to create the least amount of obstruction in my workshop or overhead. So I'm choosing the absolute highest point that will give me a perfectly horizontal or flat line along the length of my workshop. To run the extension cord down the length of the workshop, I'm going to use a steel wire rope. And I'm using the wire rope because I need something that I can tension to a point where it is stiff and it won't really bow or dip under the weight of the extension cord. So anything elastic or that will stretch over time is pretty much ruled out.
To secure the wire rope to the eye bolt, I'm looping it through and securing it with two wire rope ferrules and then a piece of heat shrink just to round it off or smooth it out a bit. This is mostly cosmetic. Now, if I didn't have ferrules or a crimper, I would have used a crosby clamp or two, which would have worked just as well, but it might have been a little bit more chunky. Okay, so for the other end of the wire rope, I'm going to be attaching it to a turnbuckle. The turnbuckle will then hook into the eye bolt. This is what's going to allow me to tension the wire rope. Okay, so that's it for the overhead extension cord support system. Quick, easy, and cheap. How well will it support the weight of the extension cord? Well, let's find out. <laughs> to tie the extension cord to the overhead support system, I'm going to use these mini carabiners. So I'm going to add, let's say, six or seven to the overhead steel wire rope, which will be able to slide up and down. Then every, let's say, 800 mils of extension cord, I will tie it to a carabiner with a zip tie or a cable tie. So I will make an 800 mil loop, tie it to a carabiner, then another 800 mil and tie it again. So the cable or the power cord should be able to extend and compress or retract, kind of like a big slinky. Now the flex in the cable or in the extension cord should be enough to offset the torsion in the cable that will happen when the cable gets extended or the slinky gets extended and retracted. But obviously the larger the loops, the less impact or the less torsion will happen when it extends. Right, so that's the overhead power cord component. Now, it might not be the prettiest solution, but it is cheap and it is functional, which for me is a little bit more important. Now, some of you are probably wondering why I left this very long tail at the end. I could have just added this on the final loop and have a mobile PowerPoint in the workshop. But as I said, I want to add my own spin on this project. I want to add a mobile unit that I can pretty much fix anywhere in the workshop. I want it to be telescopic and I want to fit this to that unit. So it will be stored up in the roof. I can move it around where I want to use it and then pull it down to access it at this level where it is comfortable. After that, I can let it go and it will retract back up into the roof. Okay, so for my mobile power supply, I'm going to start with a base. Into this base, I'm going to install powerful magnets, which means that I can attach it at any point in my workshop because I have a steel roof by simply lifting it up and sticking it up against the roof.
Okay, so for the base, I'm cutting it into a triangular shape and I'm going to recess or set three powerful rare earth magnets. Now these magnets need to be strong enough to overcome the tension of the spring I'm going to be installing on the inside of the telescopic system. So when I pull down on the telescopic system, the magnets do not detach from the roof. Now these magnets aren't very expensive, but out of this entire project, it is probably of the components that is a bit pricier. They're fairly easy to get your hands on. I'm using ones with a hole in the center so I can screw or fix it to the base, but I will see what's available on Amazon and add it to my Amazon storefront. The link will be down below if you guys are looking to get your hands on something like this. The base on the mobile component plays an important role in bringing this part of the project together. It houses the magnets and it will also accommodate the telescopic downpipe to which I will tie the extension cord to give me access at a comfortable level or at eye level. Just on a little side note, if I didn't have a metal surface to stick this unit to, I probably would have used a few strategically placed hooks in the roof of my workshop to give me or to maintain some degree of mobility in this unit. Right, so now I have the three main components of my mobile unit pretty much prepared and ready to be assembled. I have the mobile unit that will be able to be placed anywhere in my workshop up against the roof thanks to these powerful magnets. Now at the moment I have the magnet secured with a wood screw in the center, but I might have to rethink this and replace the screw with a bolt that goes right through and a nut and a washer on the other side because, as I said, these magnets are quite powerful and they could possibly tear the screw out of the wood. Then onto the magnet unit or mobile unit, I've added these pivot holes or fixing holes. Now I'll get to this one in a moment, but the main one over here is going to be used to fix this 19 millimeter pipe. Now I'm fixing it on a pivot to offset the angle of the roof and still give me a vertical downpipe that I can use to attach the power cord to. Now I did mention that I want the downpipe to be telescopic so I can access it at eye level but still store it up in the roof and out the way. Now lucky for me I went one size down on the aluminium pipe to a 16mm and found that they actually fit into each other quite nicely. Now to make this very basic telescopic system self-retractable, I'm going to add a piece of inexpensive bungee cord down the center of it. To install the bungee cord into the telescopic system or into the two pipes, I'm cutting a piece that is slightly shorter than the longer of the two pipes. I'm feeding it through the pipe on either end through a washer that is slightly larger than the diameter of the pipe and then tying it off at each end with a cable tie. This will obviously prevent the bungee cord from pulling through the washer.
Okay, so this is the complete mobile magnet unit. Now the hole over here, or cutout over here, and this pivot point over here was intended for a release mechanism. For in case the magnets were a little bit too strong to easily pull off the steel plating of the roof, but it doesn't look like it's going to be necessary. The magnet system works well and it is quite strong up against the roof. The telescopic system also works well and will allow me to access the power point here where it is comfortable. But when it is being used, I can store it up in the roof and out the way again. Here I have space to use whatever is plugged in over there. To remove the mobile system is also quite easy. I simply just push it to the side like this and it comes off the roof. Right, so that's it for the mobile magnet unit. Now, because I'm no longer going to use the release mechanism over here, I might rethink the placement of the downpipe just to give it more of a balanced feel. Then I'm going to attach the extension cord or power cord to it, and I can test the mechanism or the unit as a whole. Okay, so now I have my main festoon system or loop system that can transport the extension cord along the length of my workshop. To the mobile unit, I added a large loop which will allow me to move this to pretty much any point along the width of the festoon system to give me power pretty much anywhere in my workshop. Okay guys, so that's pretty much the idea behind this project and I think I have achieved what I wanted to achieve. Now as soon as I'm finished with this video, I'm going to get started on the airline that will run down the opposite end of my workshop. The beauty of this project is its simplicity and its functionality, but even more so the fact that it is actually very cheap to do or to add to a workshop. Most of the hardware is very inexpensive and can be found on Amazon, so I'll add it to my Amazon storefront and link it down below if you guys want to check out pricing availability and alternative stuff like that. Then if you guys have anything you would like to add or any concerns you would like to raise, drop it in the comment section down below. I would love to have a conversation. For the guys that are waiting on the revised version of my all-in-one workbench, well, it's going to be more of an all-in-one workshop, but I am getting onto those videos and I'm going to start posting some updates on that really soon. So if you want to see that or more videos like the one I'm doing today and you aren't subscribed yet, you should do that now so you don't miss out. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, remember, if you want to support my channel or my brand, you can check out my plans website. I will link it down below. Also, some exciting news. We might be looking at rebranding Woodshop Junkies and launching a brand new line of merch associated with my brand. We have a professional designer on board, so I am really excited about that. Keep a lookout. For now, however, thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Cheers.